<laughs> Yo! <laughs> Melted in my mouth. Quack, quack. Super delicious, well seasoned. It's in my favorite sauce. I have never had a fried chicken feet before. This is the Lebanese Crunch Wrap Supreme. Has the absolute best Hugo bibimbap I've ever had in my life. All right, everybody, when we're talking about new Asian food concepts in New York City, we gotta start with this one. This is the Instant Noodle Factory downtown version. It started in Long Island City, but they just opened one in East Village. Let's go in. Yo, what up? What's up, baby? Oh, what's up, what's up? This is Marcus. Marcus is a fellow Asian comedian. Um, but yeah, Marcus, yo, tell us about this spot because this is a concept that is pretty new to Manhattan. Exactly, um, it's new. The original location's on Long Island City, but basically uh, everyone wants like you know instant noodles, especially the hype around instant noodles recently like came through, and we gave kind of like an option, and you know people get to see also all the culture because right now like we have like so many like ramen choices. Guys, you get to choose one of these, and then you get to choose whatever you want to put in it. All right, Marcus, what are the three instant noodles we gotta get? Okay, so the beef birria, definitely. Uh, we make the birria in-house and whatnot. We have the classic tonkatsu, and then as well as, uh, if you guys wanna try some different dishes, we have laksa ramen, uh, which is like Malaysian. Shout out to the Malaysia. <laughs> All right, let's get the, let's get the other three, man. Guys, leading off, we've got Instant Noodle Factory. You are looking at a birria ramen. These run anywhere from ten to thirteen dollars. This is a really cool concept, man. No, I think it's cool because you can have anything you want in it. You can have a bunch of add-ons. This is a laksa one. Guys, look at the laksa. If you guys have ever had that from Malaysia, obviously they don't use instant noodles in actual laksa, but flavor. Oh, I can no, smell the the. They torch this and this and this pre-made too, so you really smell the smokiness on the birria. The beer mm. make the birria in-house. My God, shout out to Instant Noodle Factory, man. I hope this idea blows up. It'll be interesting to see how people respond to it because it, it's definitely a flip. Do you think it's interesting that it feels like almost more of a concept from Asia? It does. Like a, it does. I can almost see like a, like Tapoki. Tapoki, they have uh, spots where they do this as well. It is kind of like you made it at home, but it's just souped up times 10, bro. I gotta try the birria broth. I know this is really big mm. right now. This is actually a mixture between other birria ramens I've had and something a little bit more conventional. This lots of one's pretty good. Last but not least, we've got the classic tonkatsu. Mm. This is the one that's most, you know, designed to mimic the most popular ramen style in America. Let's check out the chashu. That's super charred. Good, good. Mm. Honestly, they were all really solid and like we said, I think some taste a little bit more like you made it at home, and other ones taste like you're like, nah, there's no way you can make this at home. After trying all three, I'm actually gonna go ahead and say my favorite was the laksa. Ooh. Because it was the most unique, because I never buy the laksa instant ramen packs, but I might have to after this. I think for a lot of people, this is gonna be so nostalgic because in their student years and their high school years, they had so much instant ramen. It's a completely different flavor profile because usually the noodles are more flash fried and then you're boiling them up again versus like a regular noodle shop. Nah, I think it's gonna be great for these winter months. You know, you want some hot soup, but you don't wanna just eat it straight out of the package. You want it kind of fixed up a little bit and you want it still cheap because it's true. If you get a bowl of actual, you know, from the ramen shop, it's gonna be, you know, you sit down there, it's gonna be 18, 20 bucks at least. So, yo, shout out to Instant Noodle Factor. I think this is a really cool concept. I think it's gonna get more popular, so. Yo, shout out to Marcus too, though. Hey, hey, did you ever think you'd go from comedian to ramen chef? It, it keeps bouncing back, <laughs> so. Instant ramen chef. <laughs> and of course, guys, I am gonna try our smala on this tonkatsu ramen. A little strip. Woo! <laughs> Five C. Listen, guys, we're in the East Village. We're on 10th Street. I'm telling you, Chinatown is going big time because Hey Hey Roast Meats, which is, has a lock on the Chinatown Cha Siu game. I don't want to say lock. There's a lot of other great spots too, but it's one of the best spots. Has just opened up a flagship store here and it is very fancy. Come take a look. Listen, guys, they got a gigantic roast duck here. It's super clean. It's super modern. Look at the design. I'm telling you, they're bringing Siu Mei Cha Siu, Siu Op into 2024. You are looking at a very aesthetic aulam mean right here. Look at this aulam, which is beef brisket. My goodness, the way they place the bok choy in this sort of circular dragon pattern is incredible. Ah, that beef brisket is just falling apart. Mmm. But of course, we're eating here like Koreans with a metal spoon. Mmm. 
Usually, guys, if Cantos make it, it's not going to be as spicy. But one of the owners here is from Hong Kong. One of them is from Malaysia. Malaysia is spicier. Got your garlic special wings. A little bit different uh, seaweed on top. Fried mantos and condensed milk. It's not about macros. It's not. It's not. I'll eat it. It's fire. Listen, guys, you can't do it without the scallion chicken, the boxy Man, you gotta put some additional gurung chung on there in Mandarin. That's jiang chung, it's ginger scallion in English. Let's go. That's really good. We got a really deep roasted flavor. Like I said, guys, this is your most macro friendly, nutrient friendly dish right here. Mm. I'm gonna give that a five out of five easily. Last but not least, guys, we've got the taro duck egg rolls. Really cool item. Let's get into it. This and the duck, guys, come get it. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, last but not least of the roast meats, you've got the soy sauce chicken, the siao kai. I'm telling you guys, I don't know what farm they're getting these from, but these is some fatty fowl. It's valid. All right, I'm in charge of testing out the roast meats, AKA the siumay. Now, obviously, Hei Hei is known for the roast meats uh, in Chinatown, but let's see if it's also good here. Oh my gosh, these are the chicken wings. They're chopped up, nice and gooey, nice and sweet. I also love how they have the gurung chong, AKA the ginger scallion sauce on the table. They got it on the table. You don't have to ask for it. It doesn't come into a small dish. They give it to you as much as you want. Mm. Mmm. Oh my god. Nice and sweet. Low. Ginger scallion action. Delicious, delicious. We have the roast pork. Do not get it mixed up with the barbecue pork, which is cha siu. This is siu yuk. Look at that crispy skin. Dip it in a little bit of sauce. I'm not really sure. Is this hoisin sauce? We're gonna see. It smells like a duck sauce. It's a little sweet. Mmm. I like that skin. It's crispy, but not too hard and crunchy. There's been times where I thought I was gonna crack a tooth on some of these pig skins. Mmm, it's good, it's good. Here we got the spare ribs. Mm. Let's check these out. Bone is nicely cut by a cleaver. Nice and gooey and sweet, man. This is the rice plate here. I believe it's about $15. Nice fried egg. Ooh, let's open this. Oh, is oozy too. Like little oozy vert. Oh, snaps. I like that, I like that, all right. And I like how they give you the greens and everything. Guys, let's check the cha siu. You can see that the red does take up quite a bit of the exterior. That's what I like to see. Mmm. Dang, that egg was cooked perfectly. Guys, you wanna think that, I know a lot of people out there think that Chinatowns are shrinking, but I actually think Chinese restaurants are just dispersing because this is from Chinatown and you used to be able to only get deliver only if you were in the East Village, but you can get roast duck siu op beautifully cut here, right in the East Village. I mean, look at that skin. Can you tell how much fat is in between the roast skin and, and the meat? That's delicious right there. And then here you have your little bit of like duck juice. I want to say it's salty. This is not the sweet duck sauce. This is like the kind of the salty duck juice, like the, the ajou, if you would will, if you would say. Melted in my mouth. Quack, quack. All right, guys, past the roast meats. We're here with the mixed noodle. Look how masterfully and beautifully they are placed. My four one tons line up on the side and then I got my cha siu and my little crispy onions. And then they got this broth right here. Let me taste this broth because this, this looks like a bone broth or like a broth that you might get a Korean salong tongue in. But you know, all, all cultures kind of got a milky broth, so. Ooh, that's light. That's gonna go well. Mix it up. Let me put a little bit just to like moisturize, you know, get it unsticky and then this actually reminds me of a lot of like Malaysian noodles. Um, if you guys know, um, in Singapore and Malaysia, they eat like, oh, 
Hokkien mee or, or like prawn mee or, or there's like a lot of like Malaysian noodles that come like this kind of dry style. So, let me eat it. Mmm, beautifully done, man. I'll tell you this, the noodle dishes, the roast meats, their appetizers, A plus, come to Hey Hey, Chinatown chain that made it outside. They're doing big things out here in East Village. All right guys, our next Asian concept is kalachi. It's a brand new concept. They got kalachi rolls. It's a Pakistani food. They got chicken rolls, diesel fries, beef rolls, plant-based rolls. It looks delicious. It looks brand new and clean. Let's go inside. Kalachi rolls, 650 each in my hand. I have a chicken and a beef one. Let's see which one I unwrap. Which one is the blue one? Guys, deep fried, so you know it's got all the flavor. It's crispy, let me break that open. It's a nice little snack. I like it, 650. I feel like they make it accessible. It's a no-brainer. You can go pick it up, eat it. Try it, this is the beef one. Mmm. Oh. Right out the get-go, tons of flavor. What you're seeing here, is maple syrup. It's actually for the fries, the umami fries. So I feel like they're the only people doing the French fries with the syrup. I haven't had this at any other restaurants in New York City. Woo! It's like kind of weird at first, but it kind of works. It's like very sweet, but the fries have a lot of seasoning on there. It kind of got that slight cumin-y vibe, the Middle Eastern, Western China. Like it reminds me of Xinjiang food, but of course it's all related. Let's go people. Split it open. Oh, that looks juicy. Mm. Right off the back, my preferred one is the chicken one. I think that is hitting like crazy. Check out the fries too, guys. Maple syrup, it is a experience like none other. Check out Kalachi. All right, guys, we're here at Cheeky Saigon. This is a collaboration between Saigon Social and Fish Cheeks. Fish Cheeks is a famous Thai restaurant. One day only, you got this tasting menu. All right, starting off, we got the Zob fried chicken, and they put chicken in quotes because it's actually chicken gizzards, but with also chicken skin. Mmm. That crunch, really good. The skin is my favorite bite there. Oyster tempura with coconut chili jam. Wow. Ooh, freshly fried warm chili got that bite got that little bit of sting in my the back of my throat too I like that it's fried but you can still taste the oyster and the whole texture of the oyster is still there but it has this really nice light coat of running super delicious well seasoned and it's in my favorite sauce oh my gosh here we got lemongrass razor clam salad Guys, a lot of fried shallots, little bits of razor clams chopped up in there on the shrimp chip. I'm excited. Lemongrassy, fragrant. That's great. And this is their seafood wun sen. Woo, super hot pot. Look at those delicious rice noodles. In Chinese, we call this fun si. And it looks delicious. It's steaming, baby. Look at that. Mm. Here with the premier entree. It is called the five way chicken skewer. Different parts of the chicken feet, heart, liver, uh, thigh meat. And then you have the different Thai dips here. You got this amazing lettuce. Let's just eat one. Um, guys, I have never had a fried chicken feet before, so. I really don't really know how to eat it, but I'm gonna eat it like how I usually eat chicken feet. Yo, I'm chewing the fingernail. That's crazy. I never thought I'd do that. Fried chicken feet is a whole different experiment, man. Livera. Let's go chicken thigh. And the chicken liver. Oh. That's the one. I tried some new stuff today, guys. Pretty exciting stuff. We got Saigon Social. Check it out. All right, you guys. Next up on our LES food crawl, we've got Dat's Deli. The original location went viral in Hollis, Queens. It's way over 10 miles away. Now we got one in the LES. Check it out. 
All right, you guys, we are at Dad's Deli. They have a location now in the LES. I'm here with Bobby. Hey, you guys went on? viral. All right, let's check it out. You got oxtail, you got mac, you got a Jamaican beef patty wrapped in what, cocoa bread? Uh, it's called butterflop. It's a Guyanese style cocoa bread. A Guyanese. Listen, guys, shout out to the Guyanese. Let's try to take a taste. Mmm. Listen, guys. That's a lot. As far as your macros go, you will hit your caloric intake with this one. That's deli. Mmm. When you get through the soft bread, I think you get a little bit of crunch from the patty. And then you get all the oxtail and the mac. And it's just like a crazy party in my mouth right now. All right, you guys, next up, we are at Hello Yam here in the East Village. This is a brand new Japanese Yakimo concept. If you guys are familiar with Don Donkey, the chain that's famous all around Asia from Tokyo, you're gonna know about this. All right, you guys, we are here at Hello Yam and we are looking at what? Custom, yes. Okay, and you, you import this from Japan? Yes. Wow, and tell us about this because this is the one that you always see on Instagram. Yes, yeah, so this is like a silky paste parfait comes with the ice cream, a little bit of whipped cream, a piece of sweet potatoes, and a cornflakes. You guys, New York is in such an interesting place. This yam dessert concept is relatively new to Japan. Obviously, they've had it for longer than America, but this is still even new in Japan. Mmm, listen guys. Let me tell you what I love about yams, guys. I loved them before I found out they were a complex carb that was actually a good carb for you. It's just like when you're around Asia, you can get sweet potatoes, yams, just cooked on the side of the street in every Asian country. It's like probably my number one street snack and it's been around for like a thousand years. Mm. Listen guys, they import these all the way from Kagoshima, Japan. This is the creme brulee yakimo. Oh my goodness, I never even had this before. I believe this is the only place in America you can get this right now here at Yahello Yam in the East Village. Yo, listen, it didn't even need it, but it was an addition. It didn't even need it though. Oh my goodness, I did not know what to expect from this angel hair purple yam, but I swear to God, squeezing it through those little holes, it does like kind of change the taste and the texture, and it just makes it like super fluffy, and I think this is a great snack. You guys gotta check out Hello Yam. Go talk to Emmy, she's the owner, she's nice. Just, this is just a really cool concept. Mm. All right, you guys, we are at Hokkaido Baked Cheese Tart here in the East Village. This is a brand new location. I believe the first ones were in Flushing. And as you can see, guys, we're not looking at Don Tots. You might think they're egg tarts, which is based off the Portuguese pastel de nata, but these are Hokkaido cheese tarts. Salted caramel, chocolate, hojicha, matcha, ube purple yam, sakura orange, strawberry, mango, egg brulee, and of course, the original. Lead off with the salted caramel. This is the one that caught my eye. It's got the most toppings on it. You've got the uh, corn flakes, the caramel. Smell like fire. I'm gonna go with five out of five. Chocolate. Yo. <laughs> Strawberry, guys. Listen, this is. It was fresh, it's a little bit more liquidy, it's, it's the temperature. It's like a Shaolong Bao. All right guys, I'm swapping in because uh, David's insulin is spiking. Uh, here's mango, fresh, I can see it jiggle, look. That's how you know it's fresh, it's because it's jiggling. Liquidy goodness, wow. Hoji Cha. Brown roasted green tea, which is essentially what hoji cha is. Mmm. I recommend when you're eating this, you gotta go in with a sharp bite to really break the pie crust evenly. If you go slow, it's gonna shatter on you. Sakura with orange. Look at that. You got rose petals, you got Sakura flowers, and then you got a little orange in the middle. Let's go. Mmm. The funny thing is, it's like your nose dives straight into it. So it's like you smell all that Sakura. It's, I, it's like a whole experience. Here we have the egg brulee one. This one to me is probably gonna be similar to a egg tart don tot or a pastel de nata. Mmm. 
No. Not gonna lie, that is one great potat right there. Portuguese egg tart is really good. Guys, last but not least, we got the matcha. <coughs> Remember, they do make their egg cheese tarts uh, fresh here. And uh, you know, if you get them fresh, they're very liquidy and extremely warm and extremely delicious, but a little bit hard to eat. This is the matcha one. <laughs> wow. Okay, so if you're coming to Hokkaido Cheese Tart for the first time, here are the three must-get flavors in our opinion. One is the mango, two is the egg brulee, and definitely try the salted caramel. Those are unlike any other cheese tarts out there in the game. Shout out to Hokkaido Cheese Tart. You know, anything with the word Hokkaido in it is like extra good. All right, you guys, next up on our East Village Crawl, oh, yeah. I'm here with Chef Tony. What's up, guys? Hen House. Good, good to see well. you, brother. Welcome. Tell us about your spot. We are a new age Lebanese eatery, the best shawarmas, best fried chicken sandwich in town, and we got you fucking covered with everything, boy. Hey, man, and I saw that you guys went viral recently with yes. the, uh, a little, what the, what, tell us about that. Did so we got, we got a Lebanese style crunch wrap. It's late night only, so don't be coming in here early. So <laughs> it's, uh, fried, it's fried coriander potatoes, garlic sauce, Armenian sausage, cheese curds, slow roasted lamb shoulder, lemon cabbage, and tabbouleh, fried pita bread wrapped in this massive, Massive, massive bread called Maru with a ranch piri piri sauce. It's Yo, crazy. let me tell you this. This it's guy, crazy. Tony Bacon, has cooked some of the food, best food I ever had in my life. So I'm excited to be here at Head and House. Let's check you. it out. Guys, we got the legendary hyper viral Lebanese crunch wrap right now. You can't oh even get God. this right now. He made this specially for us, by the way. Ooh. My goodness. I'm going to show you guys what this is. This is crazy how much meat is in there. Guys, this is all halal here. So it's just like, everybody can eat it. Let's go. It's the yin and yang. Yo, smashing those potatoes work perfectly. It gives you like this Middle Eastern breakfast vibe. Yo, I'm telling you, this is the single most creative, fun and delicious thing I've eaten in a year. I keep eating it. It's like this weird mixture, and it's just got this tabbouleh, and it's oozing, tabbouleh oozing. Come to Hen House and get the Lebanese crunch wrap right. Late night only, though. Whoa, it's going viral. All right, here they got their chicken sandwich. It is a gargantuan piece of chicken thigh, and guys, you cannot joke. I mean, Chef Tony does not play around. Dude, it's even branded right here. Yeah, I'm gonna go in, guys. I don't even know how to eat this right now. And I like how you separate the spicy sauce from the cream sauce on the bottom. They don't mix, you actually taste them in layers as you go down. Guys, we, I don't know, man. By the time you watch this video, maybe us and Chef Tony come up with a collab, smala, on the crunch wrap. Mm. Food fire, man. Middle Eastern plus Eastern. Yo, listen, Middle. guys, come to Hen House. I'll drop the Yelp, the Google review. It's good, just come. All right, you guys, our next Asian concept is actually sushi counter here in the West Village. This came straight from Australia, and uh, this is how they eat quick rolls over there, and it's kind of like a new thing because it's like really cheap, it's really affordable, it's still fresh, it's already like prepped, almost like pre-rolled cafeteria style. I guess you could call these pre-rolls, and they got these cool little, I've never even seen this before. This is a chicken teriyaki one. I'm gonna dip it into QP mayo. Three for 12, guys, it's a good deal. I'm just gonna take this uh, sea bass shoyu. Oh, you are being so cookie, untraditional. Put it in the cube. Oh my god! This is a spicy shrimp. I just think like sushi in New York is just in a whole another revolutionary phase right now. You got sixty dollar omakases and all these new concepts and people serving it like a fried taco shell with the nori. All right, you guys. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I like this place a lot more than the other Australian concept sushi bondi. This is this is way better. <laughs> I'm not, not that good, but this, this is good. You got the miso in the cup. Boom, wasabi. Honestly, man, it's a good deal. And like, it's cool to see how they do it in Australia. It tastes good. It's almost like an onigiri with less rice. So I actually prefer the ratio. All right, you guys, we are at Koba here in Fidei. We're here with Albert. Uh, can you tell us about your spot right now? All right, so, uh, this is called Koba Korean Barbecue. It's like a fast, casual, traditional Korean spot. We have uh, make-your-own bowls, we got sambap sets, we have 
chapter of a traditional thing is printing. This is a traditional paper. Right? Hell yeah, and you guys got some kimbaps here too? Yeah, we got kimbap. <laughs> oh man, yo dude, you guys do a really good job of making it look good for a fast casual. Thank you, thank you. Hell yeah. All right, you guys, let's check it out. Brand new Asian concepts here in Manhattan right now. Got the gochujang. Yeah, we're gonna put that in here. We're gonna mix it up. Give me some taco pie. We got the runny egg. Yo, this is a really interesting concept because I have seen bowl spots like a BB Go, but it's like, it's a derivative of bibimbap. This is like a real, actual, authentic bibimbap to go. Got the multi-grain purple rice. I'm not just saying this, guys. Koba has the absolute best to-go bibimbap I've ever had in my life, and I've had quite a bit. It might also be the most expensive too, but I'm telling you, it's easily the best. Here's my take on Koba, which is fast traditional Korean. That's what they call it. Look at this gigantic bowl of japchae. It's huge, bro. This is all japchae. This is bigger than almost any serving of japchae you can get even at the restaurants. Like this is pounds of it, two pounds, three pounds. Let's try it out. For japchae, there should be a strong sesame, oil flavor, some soy sauce. It should all come together real nicely. Noodles should be bouncy and chewy. Mmm, that's pretty good. They're not too sweet. Got everything I need in it. And you even have the soup on the side. This is like the soybean soup. This is very traditional to have soybean soup. So, hey man, they got mandus here too. Hell yeah. Yo, shout out to Albert here at Koba, man. Come check it out. Let me know what you think. Could this be the future of Korean food in America? What's going on guys? We are at Thai for Thought, a brand new Thai restaurant here in the East Village and they have a Muay Thai burger with a Thai fried egg on top. You've got Thai spices in there, you've got lettuce, you've got beef cooked Thai style, you've got the spicy mayo on the bun. Boom, right here, Muay Thai burger. A lot of protein, so if you do study Muay Thai, you're gonna be able to build the muscle like Rod Tang, take the punches to the face. Mmm. Listen guys, it comes with fries. This is almost like a Thai steak burger. I don't know if they have this in Thailand. I would imagine somebody inventive, you know, made it for expats. But listen guys, this is one of the best Asian burgers I've really had in a long time. I've had a lot of them. Some of them work, some of them don't. The Muay Thai burger, it works. Wow, the chef back there invented this. Guys, hey, shout out to you, bro. Yo, the flavors are popping. It's got a lot of basil, but has that nice kick. The beef is tender. Mmm. Well, almost feels like a pad kwa pao burger. Like a, that, that kind of flavor, right? It's a little sweet, basil-y. Really good. Wow. Brand new addition to East Village. Check it out. Being from Seattle, I've been pretty accustomed to only seeing Starbucks around globally. But guess what? There is another chain in New York from Seattle called Glazed Teriyaki that says they serve Seattle-style chicken thigh, obviously salmon teriyaki as well. It is a gigantic culture in Seattle. Of course, we got the uh, sesame on the salad here, so it's pretty interesting. They don't know about this in New York. Honestly, it does taste like a Toshio's a little bit. Not not fully, not fully. I'm not saying it's like fully like Seattle, but I'd say it's about an eight out of 10. Listen guys, is a 1970s theme Seattle teriyaki spot going to make it? Maybe, maybe not, but I'm not going to lie. The teriyaki is good. Our next LES concept comes to us from Midtown. This is a Japanese spot and you kind of get that Rapongi vibe. If you guys have ever been to Tokyo, there's this sort of American sailor bar area. They got a really cool, you know, decor, ambiance, environment here. And I'm telling you, they got my yakitori cooking right now. You get to zoom in. Yeah. Just like we are in Japan right now. I'm telling you guys. Oh yeah, what do you got? So it's like a Taiwanese koso. It's a uh, inoki wrap and pork belly. It's a heavy shrimp, ginkgo nuts, cartilage, shishiro pepper. Ooh, and we got our dollar gyozas here, guys. They got specials every day. You can get a different appetizer for a dollar. We got the gyoza. Uh, I gotta start with the shishado peppers. They give you salt or tare. Tare is a little bit more of a soy sweet mix. Uh, for shishados, I had to pick tare, but for the other ones, I picked shio, the salt. 
I love shiseidos. Moving on, guys, we've got chicken cartilage. Uh, these skewers range from like three to five dollars. This one uh, was five. If you guys come get yakitori, get the ginkgo nut. It tastes healthy. I love the texture too. Ibi. Ibi in Japanese means shrimp. You can eat the head. We're gonna discard it for right now. Bacon wrap enokis. This is yuzu on chicken thigh. Listen guys, there are not a lot of uh, izakaya yakitori type spots like this in the LES. They're mostly in the East Village, of course, in Little Japantown, 53rd, 54th, up there by uh, Ichiran or whatever, you know. But come check out uh, this spot, Toria. Round two here at Toria, you've got bacon wrap, asparagus, you've got teba wings, boom, boom. Teba wings, guys, listen, man, I highly recommend you guys come check out the decor here at Toria. It's actually really dope. Kind of gives me Crystal K and Rapongi vibes, like I said. Next up on brand new Asian food here in East Village, we're in Union Square. It's the edge of East Village. It still counts. And we are ordering Ba Yu Jiaozi, which is fish dumplings. The owner here is from Dalian. Uh, and yeah, we all... And look, I mean, look at the master. She's making them. Uh, she makes. Mm, she said hundreds. Like I said, guys, we're at Jian Dumpling. Previously, Bayou Jiaozi, you could only find it pretty much at one spot in the city, which was uh, Dongbei Mama, which was called Tiguan's. But you know what? You could get them in Flushing because there's a lot of Northern Chinese people in Flushing. Guys, that is flounder fish and cilantro added with chicken broth, fish meat. Were these the best Bayou Jiaozi I ever had in my life? No. Is it cool to see it in the city? Yes. Was it a little expensive? Maybe. Hey, listen guys, it's hard to find fish dumplings in the city. Um, if you get a chance to try it, try it. Why not? Probably never had fish dumplings before. All right, guys, next up on Cheap Chinatown Eats. I know we're not exactly in Chinatown, but we're here at Essex Market, which is Chinatown adjacent. And we're here at one of the best Thai brands. Top Top, super famous in Brooklyn, in Queens, but now this is their location in Lower Manhattan. Uh, I got Thai boat noodles for $15. This is actually not even a dish that you can find at every Thai restaurant, to be honest. So I'm really excited to try it. And then you got the Isan sausage for just $3. Let's check this out. Mmm. Ooh, the little pig blood in there. See, I don't really like pig, pig's blood in the cube. But when it's blended up in a stew, I do it. Mmm. Tendon, of course. For Thai boat noodles, you gotta try the meatball. Mmm. We got the sausage, Isan sausage. Mmm. This is a really good Thai spot here, not too far from Chinatown. But also, there's also Chinatown Ice Cream Factory here and some other Chinatown favorites in Essex Market. So again, Chinatown adjacent, but pretty good deal. 15 bucks, I'll rock with it. <laughs> All right, one more dish at Zab Zab. We got the worker's favorite, guys. This is the Pad Krapao with chicken. A little spicy, medium spicy. You can see the little chili peppers, guys. And I got the cracked egg on top. Um, this is one of my favorite dishes, and it's a very simple dish. It's all thrown together, minced chicken, lots of basil, lots of flavor. Let's do it. Mm, it kind of all comes together almost like a saucy fried rice, if you think about it. Mmm. Oh. Propao, never short of flavor. And what I think is cool is that there's actually not that many spots in Chinatown that serve Pad Krapao, and there's actually not that many Thai restaurants, period. So this is the next level, man. This is not just Pad Thai and Pad Ziyu. This is the Krapaos. You got the Krapaos here. How popular can this dish be? Is it your favorite? You let me know in the comments down below. This with the cracked egg, egg was about 16 bucks. A lot of protein and a lot of rice though. Very filling. 